Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the designer behind Evelyn and Peter. And before I get started and show you what I have for you today, I wanted to apologize for my voice. I am sick and all of my children have been sick and they have passed it on to me. And unfortunately, this is the only time I had available over the weekend to record this video and do the voiceover for this tutorial for you. So I apologize for that, but I hope you guys can forgive me because this cardigan is super cute and I really love it. So I had to do a tutorial for you guys to help you out. Um, so this is what it looks like. Let's see. Ta-da! It's super, super fun to make. I used, um... Lion Brands Nubu, which is a worsted weight yarn, and mine is in the color Buff. And then you're also going to need a 5mm hook, but all of that information is in the written pattern, which I'll link in the description. So, as always, I recommend that you follow along with that in the pattern, because I am not making a um, actual size in this tutorial, I'm making like a little miniature version, little sample version, just to walk you guys through the steps. Um, so mine isn't gonna be a full size in the video, it's like a smaller version of the cardigan. But I still go over everything that you need to know and all the important steps and everything like that. I'll walk you through the whole thing, it's just smaller. Um, so yeah, I can try it on for you guys really quick. It's worked from side to side, so Normally, um, card like I'll make my cardigans bottom up or top down, but this one is side to side. If you've made my saltwater taffy tee, then that is how that one is made as well. So the front and back panel are made um, all in one piece. So you'll start on the end, and the entire first row is the front and back, and it's a high-low cardigan with a slit, so your back panel is going to be longer than the front so if you are making it and you think oh my gosh i did something wrong you didn't i promise um the back is supposed to be longer than the front and the side slit here as well you can keep it as um long as mine but that's easily customizable if you wanted to sew that whole thing up you could do that as well i just think it looks super cute with the side slit and then Let's see what else so this whole thing is worked in one piece the only seaming you'll be doing is right here under the arms and then I'll also show you guys how to do the ribbing and stuff like that on the sleeves um, the pattern repeat is really easy as well you're just doing like the same um, I think it's like eight row repeat throughout the entire pattern all the way across um, I'll show you guys how to like split the back neckline and continue on with the second front panel so it is really easy. It should be easily done for you guys as long as you're following the movie. If you um, need a visual, or not the movie, the tutorial, I guess. <laughs> Currently made in iMovie, which I'm having so many issues with. Oh my gosh. But anyways, um, yeah, it should be pretty simple. And then just follow along with the written pattern. I have sizes extra small through 5X. And... I have all the yardage amount that you need and um, how many skeins of yarn and hook size and everything like that for all of your um, different sizes. So obviously you'll want to follow along with that so you know how many stitches and rows and stuff like that to do because obviously it's going to be different for every single size. But yeah, I hope you guys like this pattern and again, I apologize for my sick voice within the tutorial and let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or um any comments anything like that just let me know and i will be sure to answer you so i hope you guys like it and i will catch you in the next video okay so for materials we are using line brands nubu yarn which is just a worsted weight yarn. I really love this yarn. It's very bouncy and shiny and has a really nice sheen to it. 
Um, so it's just a weight of four and I'm using the color buff and then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, which is a size H, some scissors, a needle, and then stitch markers, at least two. So we're gonna begin by creating a slip knot. So you can go ahead and wrap the yarn around your fingers and then just go ahead and reach through the loop and pull the yarn through. And then you can insert your hook into that loop and pull tight to secure. And the beginning of our pattern is going to start off with a foundation row. So go ahead and chain three, and then we're gonna work a foundation double crochet stitch instead of a starting chain. So wrap the yarn around your hook, so yarn over, and then insert your hook into that very first chain that we made. I like to rotate it slightly and insert my hook into the back bump, but you can insert it wherever you are most comfortable. Yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over, pull through the final two, and that is one foundation double crochet stitch. And we are going to continue to do this for the whole first row. So yarn over, and if you kind of rotate your work, you can see this little V on the bottom that we created from the first stitch. Insert your hook through it underneath both loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first loop only. Yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over, pull through the final two, and that is another foundation double crochet. And again, you can see the little V on the bottom. So yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the final two, that is another foundation double crochet. So we're gonna keep going with the same thing and as the more stitches you make, you can see the V's a little bit better here along the bottom and that's where you will be putting your hook for every time that you start a new stitch. So make sure that you have it under both of those loops along the bottom of your work. And basically what we're doing here is combining a starting chain and row one. So this is row one in the pattern and we're just working foundation double crochet stitches. So it's a really good technique to know, especially for garments. So just continue with your foundation stitches depending on your size that you're making. You of course will have a different amount of stitches that you need to work. So make sure that you're following along with your size within the pattern so that you can make sure you are doing the correct amount. And I'll be showing you guys a few more times. You should be able to see the little V's along the bottom a lot better now with the more stitches that you make. So yarn over, insert it into the previous stitch at the bottom, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. You can see the foundation double crochets forming. So just keep going. I am making the size small, so I will be working up 189 foundation double crochet. And so again, our cardigan is worked from side to side, so it's going to be a really long starting foundation row because it is both the back and front panel combined. So it's going to be quite long. So just keep going and make as many as it calls for in your size. Okay, so I have my little sample swatch here. Obviously yours is going to be a lot longer. I'm just making a tiny version of this cardigan because you guys don't need to see all of those stitches and all of those rows since it's just repeating. So this is my little mini version and you can see when I fold it over that the bottom part right here is the back panel and then that is the front panel on top and we are working from side to side. So this is, once we seam it and put everything together, this is actually um, the edge of the shoulder and the side seam basically. So we're going to keep going. That completes round one. And for round two, you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work. And for this row, we are going to be working our first double crochet. 
into the very first stitch in the row below. So yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. So that's one double crochet, and then chain one, and we're going to be skipping this next stitch. So skip right over it, and work another double crochet into the one following directly after. So double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, and then we're just gonna repeat this across. So chain one again, skip the next stitch and work a double crochet in the following stitch. And then again, chain one, skip one and double crochet in the following. And just keep going. You're just gonna repeat this all the way across until you get to the end of the row. So it's chain one, skip one, double crochet one, repeat across the row. And then I'll show you guys what to do at the end. Okay, so now we've worked our way across with row two, and you should be ending your last stitch as a double crochet into the last stitch of the row below. So you can see it's just creating a nice open look with the chain one skip ones, and your stitch count will also be the same. The chains do count as a stitch, and your stitch count here is not changing. So you can go ahead and turn your work, and then chain one, and we're going to be starting row three here. So for row three, you're going to work one single crochet into the very first stitch. And then we're going to be working a puff stitch into the next chain. So for the puff stitches, you need to work it into the actual chain stitch and not just the chain space like that. You need to actually insert your hook into the chain so that it's going through the loops there. So instead of just through that big gap, you wanna actually put it in the chain. So to work a puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the chain. Make sure that you're not making these chains too tight so that you can easily get your hook in there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through two loops on your hook. So you have three loops on your hook right now. Yarn over again, insert your hook into the same chain again. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops and you have a total of four loops on your hook. And then just yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook and that creates our puff stitch. Then you're going to work one single crochet into the following stitch, which should be a top of a double crochet. And then you're going to work a single crochet into the next chain space. So for the single crochets, you can work them into this space. You do not have to work them into the actual chain. Only the puff stitches need to be into the actual chain. And then work a third one in the next stitch, a fourth single crochet into the next chain space and then a fifth single crochet into the next stitch. So we've worked five single crochet, and then we're going to be working another puff stitch. So again, for the puff stitch, you are going to yarn over and insert your hook into the actual chain, not the chain space. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. And that completes another puff. And then you're going to repeat this across, so work five more single crochet. So work a single crochet into the double crochet, a single crochet into the chain space, third one, a fourth one, and then a fifth one. And then you're just going to repeat with another puff. And this is what you'll be doing across the entire row. So five single crochet, puff, five single crochet, puff, and just repeat this all the way across. And then I will show you guys what to do when we get to the end of the row. Okay, so we're coming up to the last couple of stitches here, and you can see this is my last chain space. 
So we have five single crochet and now I'm going to work another puff into this chain space into the actual chain. So work a puff into this last one. And then we're going to be working our final single crochet into the last stitch of the row. So in the very final stitch, just finish off with one single crochet. And then turn your work and that completes row three. So you can see we have our puff stitches just spaced out with five single crochet in between. And now we will be starting row four. So row four, you are going to chain two, work your first double crochet into the very first stitch, and this is just going to be a repeat of row two. So these chain one, skip ones that we did is exactly what we're going to do here. So you can go ahead and chain one, skip over the next stitch, which is the puff stitch from the row below, and then you are going to work another double crochet into the stitch right after it. And you can easily see if you are working your double crochet into the right stitch by checking and making sure it's lined up with the double crochet from the other row. So we're just going to chain one again, skip over a stitch, and work a double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. So this row, which is row four, is just a repeat of row two. So we're just doing the same exact thing all the way across, chain one, skip one, double crochet, and just do this all the way across the row. Okay, so now we're finished with row four, and you can see it's just a repeat of row two. And now we are starting row five, so you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work. And this chain two does not count as a stitch, so you're going to work your first double crochet into the very first stitch from the row below. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then for this row, you, you can work your double crochet stitches into the chain space. You do not have to work them into the chain. That's only for the puff stitches. So we're just going to be working one double crochet into each stitch across. So work a double crochet into every double crochet and into every chain space all the way across the row. So work a double crochet into the stitch and then a double crochet into the following chain space. And your stitch count will be staying the same. There's no increasing or decreasing here. So just work one stitch all the way across. Okay, so now we've completed five rows and we're going to start off with our sixth row. So our sixth row is just a repeat of row five. So it's exactly what we just did. You can chain two and turn your work. And then you're just going to work one double crochet stitch into every single stitch across the row. So make sure you get that very first stitch there and then continue with one double crochet in every stitch. And we're actually going to be doing this for a total of, so this is row six, and then you're going to do three more after it. So you will have nine rows total in your work. So work double crochets across for row six, chain two and turn, work double crochets across for row seven, chain two and turn, and then work them across for row eight, chain two and turn, and work them across for row nine. So I'm not gonna show you every single row because you're just going to be doing the same thing. So I will meet you back here after row nine. So double crochet in each stitch. Okay, so now we have nine rows completed. And in the pattern, rows two through nine is our row repeat. So from here on out, you just repeat rows two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the chain one, skip one, the puff row, another chain one, skip one, and then all the double crochet rows. And that is what you will be repeating and it'll point out in the pattern, repeat rows two through nine for however many rows. It just completely depends on your size. So make sure you follow along with that. And for the sake of this tutorial video, I will not be 
showing you the repeats. We're going to skip over that because it's just the same thing. And I am going to show you guys how to finish off this first front panel. So in the pattern, you will have, if, if I was making a size small, I would be doing another row two through nine repeat. But because this is just the sample, I'm going to show you guys how every single size finishes off after they do all their repeats. So after you work the repeats that you're supposed to, we're just going to do a repeat of row two. And as you know, that is just working a double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, and do that all the way across your row. And next is a row three repeat. So you're just going to chain one, work a single crochet into the first stitch, and then work a puff into the following, and just repeat your same thing that we have for row three before, which is one single crochet into the next five stitches, one puff, and repeat that across the row. So again, this is how every size ends. Every single size for the um, first section here ends with a repeat of row twos, two through five. So that's what I'm showing you. So work your puff stitch row and just do this all the way across. So puff and then five single crochet and then puff and five single crochet and just do this all the way across. Okay, so now we've completed our row three repeat and then every size will have another row four repeat. So you are just going to chain two and then work your first double crochet, chain one, skip over that stitch and work another double crochet into the following, chain one, skip one, double crochet and do this all the way across the row. Okay, and then the final row before we split the neckline is a row five repeat. So chain two, turn your work and work one double crochet stitch into every single stitch across. And this is the inner um, last row of the front panel. You'll see what I mean in a second when I show you what it looks like, but every row finishes this section with a double crochet row or every size finishes this section with a double crochet row. So work it all the way across. Okay, so now we finished the first section. Yours will obviously be a lot longer and wider, but this is just the sample. So here's my little swatch and this is our back part of our back panel and our first front panel combined. So you can see if I fold it together here, which is what we will be doing later on when we sew together. This is the back panel on the bottom and the front panel is laying on top and the back panel is supposed to be longer. It's a high-low cardigan, so the back panel goes down longer and um, this is where we will be adding our neckline right here and then adding our second front panel and the rest of the back panel. So this is again worked from side to side and um, the half laying on top is the front panel and the half on the bottom is half of the back panel. So we're basically going to keep going um, and at this point I'm going to show you um, how to split the neckline and we are no longer continuing with this half which is the front panel we are only continuing on with the back panel so to do that you do not have to tie off your work we're just going to keep going and only work part ways across so chain two turn your work and then for this row, we will be working one double crochet in each stitch, but we will not be working all the way across. So make sure you follow in the written pattern with your size. Make sure you know how many stitches you're supposed to work. It has your specific count for your size. And you're only going to be working a little more than halfway across this row.
Okay, so this is what it should look like. You should have stopped a little bit more than halfway across. Obviously, mine's really short since it's the sample, but this right side is the back panel and this left side is the first front panel. So we are no longer working on that front panel. Now it's only the back section for now. So chain two, turn your work. And then for this row, you're just going to work one double crochet in each stitch across again. So just work all the way across till you get to the end of the row. Yours will be a lot longer than mine. So just make sure you are following your stitch count for your size in the written pattern. Okay, and then when you get to the end, we're going to be doing the same thing. You can just chain two and then work one double crochet in each stitch across. And again, we're just working on the back panel here. So just work all the way across to the end of this row. Okay, so depending on your size, you might have a couple more rows than what I have here. So just make sure you check that, but you can kind of see it coming together. This is the front panel laying on top of the back panel. And then you keep going across and that is um, still the back panel there with the back of the neckline. And then you would keep going and continuing to widen your back panel and make a second front panel. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that to start off our second front panel. And you can, um, you don't have to cut your yarn or anything. We're just going to keep going. So at this point, we're in the section called continue back in second front panel in the written pattern. And we're going to be starting off this following row by making a chain that is as long as our first front panel. So we're gonna work a chain and then start our first row for it um, to match the other front panel. So make sure you are checking your size. If I was making the size small here, I would be chaining 90 just to give you a perspective. Obviously, mine is a lot smaller in the sample, so I won't be doing that. But make sure you are watching your chain count to make sure you have the correct for your size. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and turn your work and we're going to start off with our chain to continue the second front panel. Make sure your chain isn't twisted either. You'll wanna keep careful track of that. So you can go ahead and work your chain. So again, mine is smaller, but if I was working a size small, I'd be chaining 90. A size medium would be chaining 96. 99, 105, 108, 114, etc., depending on your size. So work your chains, and then I also wanted to point out here that you need to make sure you are not chaining too tightly because it will kind of distort the second front panel if you do. You want to be able to easily work your hook into these chains, and you want to make sure the chain length isn't too tight and scrunching your work up. So just make sure you're not doing it too tightly. And then to start off this row, you're going to yarn over and then work your first double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So yarn over and in that third chain away from you, insert your hook and work a double crochet. And again, I like to work my stitches through the back bump so I kind of rotate my work a little bit so I can reach into that back bump, work your double crochet stitch, and do the same thing in the following chain. And you just want to do this all the way across your remaining chain length. So for every chain that you have, starting from the third from the hook, you should be working one double crochet stitch into each one. So just keep going across the chain, one stitch per chain, and I'll show you guys what to do once you reach the main back panel. So just keep going with one double crochet into each chain. Okay, so now I've reached the main body of the back panel. 
and we're just going to keep going. So I just wanted to point out, make sure you don't accidentally skip any of the chains here at the end. They might be a little hard to see and then make sure you don't skip that first double crochet either. So in that very first double crochet, work a stitch and then just keep going as you've been doing. Work one double crochet into every remaining stitch across the row. Your stitch count will be the same um, stitch count that you started out with on row one. So you should mirror exactly what you have on the other side and your stitch count should be what you started out with. So keep going with one stitch into each stitch across. Okay, so now I've worked my way across and I kind of just wanted to give you guys a little perspective of what this looks like now. So we have our front panel and the back neckline and this is where we currently are is working the second front panel and the uh, and continuing with the back. And I'm not going to show you guys this whole thing because it's just a mirror of exactly what you did. And in the pattern, it writes that out exactly what you need to repeat. So we, at this point, will be starting with our repeats of row two through nine. So we just worked our double crochet row. And then at this point, depending on your size, you're just going to repeat row two through nine as many times as it calls you to do for your size. And once you work your way all the way across and complete all the rows two through nine, um, that completes the entirety of the back panel and the second front panel. So just make sure you're following along in the pattern and that you are um, doing as many rows as you should. You can double check your row count and make sure that you're staying on track. But yeah, at this point, it's just a repeat of what we just did. And then obviously your full cardigan will be a lot longer. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but because we only need to, I only need one side to show you how to complete the rest of the cardigan, but keep going in the pattern and complete the rest of the back panel and the front panel before moving on to the rest that I'm going to show you. And when you complete all those rows, you can just yarn over, pull through and cut your yarn. And so at this point, yours should be wider and you should have both front panels complete as well as the back panel. So just make sure here that you pause the video and you go ahead and complete the rows for your size and that you complete off um, the rest of the continue back and second front panel section before tying off. And then now I will show you guys how to measure out the armholes and how to seam the sides and how to make the cuffs. So once you have um, the entirety of the cardigan finished, you want to fold the two front panels over on top of the, black pan the back panel. Your right sides should be facing, so that means that the side where the little puffs are sticking out should be facing together. So you want your right sides facing and your wrong sides out. And you're also going to need your measuring tape at this point. So fold the front panel, your first front panel on top of the back panel. Make sure that the stitches are lined up nicely. Make sure that um, the front panel isn't pulling down the back panel at all. And then again, your back panel is going to be longer because that is the style of the cardigan. So no worries there. And then you're going to also need a stitch marker. And the stitch marker is just to easily hold our spot so we know where to join our yarn in later on. But first, you should be at the measure armholes section in the written pattern if you are following along. So for your size, it lists out exactly how many inches you need to measure. This is just the sample cardigan, so I'm just going to measure a teeny tiny sample here. And what we're measuring out is the armhole opening. So the extra small is seven and a half inches. So place the edge of your measuring tape right at the top um, shoulder area of the cardigan. And you're going to be measuring down and placing your stitch marker 
um, right where it hits the correct amount of inches for your size. So put the zero up at the folded part and then you can measure down. And if you're making a size small, it'll be exactly eight inches and it goes up by half an inch with every size. So just make sure you check that. And then you can place your stitch marker and you're going to want to place it through both the front and back panel. And the only thing I wanted to point out here is that you want to make sure these stitches that you have around the opening of the armhole, you should have an even amount. So if you don't, you can just pull the stitch marker out and adjust it. It's not too important if you have a couple more or a couple less than what it says in the pattern. It's not crucial to the pattern and it won't affect it at all. You just want to make sure that the stitches here on the right that are on the opening of the armhole here is an even amount. So I gave an approximate count for each size, but you'll just want to make sure that it's even. So for the size small, I had 62 stitches. So if you have 63, you can just pull out the stitch marker and adjust it by one stitch. So you'll just want to make sure you have an even amount and then you want to repeat that on both sides. So go ahead and measure out the other armhole at this point as well. And then make sure your stitch markers are lined up and that you have the same amount of stitches on both arm openings. Okay, now that we have the armholes measured, we are now going to seam the sides. So we're in the seam side section of the pattern. Begin with a slip knot and then just insert your hook. And this part is very simple. And the stitches that you placed your stitch marker is where you are going to be joining um, your yarn. So right here where the stitch marker is placed through the stitches, you're going to insert your hook into that same stitch and you're going to insert it through both the front and back panel. So you can insert your hook, make sure you're going through the stitch that the stitch marker is in, and just make sure it's through both panels. And you can also remove your stitch marker at this point as well too, if it is in your way. You're just going to yarn over, pull through both panels, and pull through the loop on your hook. So we're just slip stitching to join, and now we're going to be seaming the sides and working our way down. So insert your hook into the next stitch on both panels. Make sure you're not skipping any stitches. Yarn over, pull through both panels, and pull through the loop on your hook. And then again in the third stitch, insert through both panels. Yarn over and pull all the way through. So this is just seaming down the sides. If you prefer a different method of seaming, that is perfectly fine. You can also use a needle and your yarn and either do the mattress stitch or whichever stitch you prefer. We're, at this point, we're just joining. I just like doing the slip stitch. I think it's a lot easier and makes for a nice seam. And then in the written pattern, it points out that you do not do it all the way down. So you can see our front panel here. You're going to want to leave some stitches unworked, and this is our side slit. So in the pattern, your front panel should have approximately five and a half inches unworked. And so the total obviously will be longer with the back panel because your back panel is longer than the front. But going off just the front panel only, you want to leave five and a half inches unworked. So you can use your measuring tape and measure that out or you could just eyeball it. Or if you want a bigger slit or a smaller slit, that is fine too. You can do whatever you prefer. I just left about five and a half inches. And then you can tie off your yarn and you want to repeat that same exact thing on the other side. So go ahead and slip stitch or sew the second side as well before you move on to creating the armhole ribbing. So once you have both sides sewn up and you've tied off your yarn, you can turn your cardigan right side out. So now your puff stitches should be on the outside of your cardigan and we are going to be creating our um, arm ribbing at this point. And so you can go ahead and move your, remove your stitch marker if you haven't already. 
and you can see this is my little miniature version of the armhole. Obviously yours will be way bigger, but this is just my tiny little sample. So now I will be showing you guys how to create that ribbing. So start off with a slip knot and we are going to be joining our yarn to the bottom of the armhole opening. And so in the written pattern, we're under the arm, ribby, arm ribbing section. And you can see this is our side seam. And so in the pattern, I have it written to join to the stitch directly to the left of the side seam. So make sure you're not putting your stitch into the actual seam or into the stitch that's connecting um, with the seams together. You want to do it in that very first stitch that is unworked to the left of the seam. So you can see that one has um, the seam and the one right next to it is empty and has been unworked. So insert your hook into it, yarn over and slip stitch to join. And again, you should have an even amount of stitches around the opening of the armhole. And to start us off, we are going to be working our ribbing directly off the opening of this armhole. So this might be a new thing for some of you guys but it is really easy once you get the hang of it you're going to start off by chaining six and this is actually what I use in um, the pattern for the sizes as well as chain six so this is like a real version of it so chain six and in that second chain from the hook insert your hook into it and work a single crochet so one single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then work a second single crochet into the following chain and a third single crochet into the following and again I'm working mine through the back bumps but you can do it however you want work a fourth single crochet into the next chain and then a fifth single crochet into that last chain so make sure you're not skipping that last chain and work your fifth single crochet. So we have a total of five single crochet. And this point is where it might get a little tricky, but it's really simple, I promise. So we've worked our way back down and that completes row one. And the next thing you wanna do is slip stitch into the following unworked stitch. So not the one that we just started our chain in, but the one right after it. So insert your hook. I'll show you guys again. Just make sure you're not putting it into the wrong stitch. So insert your hook into the following stitch of the armhole that's unworked and then slip stitch to join. And then turn your work. So now we will be starting row two. And the start of row two does not have a chain. So you do not need to chain one here. You're just going to turn your work and then go directly into working your single crochet through the back loop only on these ones. So we have five single crochet in this ribbing and you're going to work one single crochet into the first one through the back loop only. So if you look at the V on top, the, one, the loop closest to you is the front and the one furthest away is the back. So insert your hook into the back loop only, work a single crochet. And then again in the next one, so you're only putting it through one loop, the loop that is furthest away from you. And then a third one into the third stitch. A fourth one into the fourth, back loop only. And your final fifth single crochet into the last single crochet, back loop only. And when you're on the outside here, this is the only point where you're going to be needing to chain one. So chain one, turn. So only when you're on the outer edge of the ribbing is when you chain one. When you're coming from the other side, you do not. So at this point, you're going to do the same thing and work your first single crochet into the first stitch through the back loop only. Again in the second. Again in the third. And in the fourth and then into the fifth. So our stitch count is always going to be five single crochet, so make sure you're not missing that last one. 
And then this one, this spot is a little bit different than what we did for the first row. From here on out, we're going to be doing two slip stitches. So in the next unworked stitch, insert your hook and work one slip stitch. And then you're going to do that same exact thing in the following unworked stitch where we haven't done anything yet, work a second slip stitch. So two slip stitches in a row. So we have our five single crochet and then two slip stitches and then turn and do not chain your work here. It might look a little wonky at first and like you're having to stretch across, but just keep going. So one single crochet, back loop only and every single stitch across. Okay, and I'll show you guys one more time. So work one single crochet in the back loop only all the way across. So three, four, and then at the ends, make sure you're not missing that last single crochet. Sometimes they can be hard to see. And then you're going to chain one and turn. Again, you're only chaining one on the outside of the ribbing. Turn your work and then work all the way back. So in that first single crochet, work one single crochet in the back loop only, and work one single crochet in each remaining stitch across the row for a total of five single crochet. And then when you get to the end of the row and you have your five single crochet complete, you are going to work your first slip stitch into the following unworked stitch of the round on the armhole opening. So again, make sure you're not slip stitching into the stitch that was already slip stitched into. You wanna work into the following one that has no stitches. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through for one slip stitch, and then in the stitch directly after it, work a second slip stitch. So a total of two slip stitches, and then turn your work. And again, there's no chaining on this end. So you're just going to repeat this all the way around the opening of your armhole. So work five single crochet in the back loop only, chain one, turn, work five single crochet in the back loop only all the way back, and then work your two slip stitches and just repeat this all the way around until you reach the other side of the side <coughs> seam. And then I will show you guys how to join the ribbing and complete the cuff. So just continue repeating this all the way around. Okay, so now we have worked our way around the entirety of the armhole opening and you should be, again, at the underarm side seam of the side of your cardigan and have the ribbing complete. So you can see we have no more open stitches left. All of our stitches have been worked into. And we've just finished our last row three, which was chaining one and working our single crochet down. And because we have no more um, stitches that are unworked, our following slip stitch will be into the side seam. So we want our last slip stitch to be in this underarm side seam where we um, joined our panels. And that's where we will be slip stitching. So directly, let me show you guys again better on camera directly into the seam so it's not an actual stitch it's just the seam where our panels are joined insert your hook and then yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook and that finishes off the final row of the ribbing and now I'm going to show you guys how to join the first and last row of our ribbing to complete the arm so usually when I made my um, cardigan I did not have to turn my sweater all the way inside out but for this little sample it's so tiny and I didn't have a lot of fabric to work with so I'm going to have to turn it inside out but normally what I would just do and suggest is you can kind of fold and maneuver your ribbing that you just did so that the um, right sides are facing because we want like you kind of bend it like this so that the right sides are facing when we slip stitch to join. But because I didn't have a lot of fabric to work with, I'm just going to turn the whole thing um, wrong side out. And you can do that too as well if it's easier for you to follow along. You want the right sides of your cardigan and your ribbing to be facing together just so that the seam is on the 
inside of the arm ribbing. Okay, so now I've turned my cardigan all the way um, wrong side out and my right sides of the ribbing are facing. And all we are doing is slip stitching the first and the final row of our ribbing together. So without having your yarn cut, you can insert your hook into the um, first stitch of both the first and last row of the ribbing and then just yarn over and pull through both and pull through the loop on your hook. And then again in the second, make sure you're going through both rows, the first and the last row. And if you wanted to use a different method of seaming, you could as well. You could also just use your needle and mattress stitch across or however you prefer. I just find the slip stitching is easiest. So you should have a total of five slip stitches. So just slip stitch um, across until you get to the end. And then after you have your five slip stitches, you can just yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook and tie off. And then you will want to repeat the same exact thing on the other side as well. So if you need to, you can go back and rewatch the tutorial on the um, ribbing of the arm and it's the exact same thing. You should have the same amount of rows on both sides and your stitch count should be the same. So you're just repeating the same thing again on the opposite side. So here I am at the end on my last slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and then just yarn over, pull through, and tie off your work. So that completes our cuff. Mine's super tiny. Obviously, you guys' will be way bigger. It's a lot easier to do when um, you're doing it on a normal cardigan as well. I can say that. There's a lot more space and room to work with. So it might look difficult in this tutorial, but it's actually pretty easy when you're making it with the normal size. So once you have that side complete, you can do the same thing on the other side. Work your second um, arm ribbing. And then the only thing left to do is add trim along the bottom of the front panel and the bottom or the bottom of both front panels and the bottom of the back panel. This part isn't absolutely necessary if you don't want to do it. It just depends on if you want the bottom of your cardigan to have a little bit more of a clean look to it. So all I did for this part was create a slip knot and then slip stitch to join my yarn on the bottom of any of the panels. So you can start wherever you prefer. And I just joined at the corner and then chained one. And then I just worked single crochet stitches across the bottom of each of the panels. And it's not too important where you're inserting your hook, wherever you think looks best. And it's also not important how many stitches you do. So the stitch count is not crucial here. You can just do work them across the bottom and you might need to play with it a little bit and pull it out if you need to, to adjust your stitches. So all you really wanna do is make sure they're even, but because you're working into the ends of the rows, you're not actually working into a specific stitch, just into the ends of the rows here but it just gives it a nice clean finish and look to the cardigan. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I apologize for my sick voice. And if you have any questions or comments, you can just leave them in the comments on this video. And I will catch you guys next time.